hands and feet. If we can't do it here, if we can't do it with family, if we can't do it with people we see week after week, how are we going to do it to the total stranger? Amen. Is it okay if it starts here? Can we start it here? Amen. So the key then to doing this, the only way that we will graduate into compassion is that we have to begin to deny ourselves, not just of lustful thinking or of sinful desires. We must begin to deny ourselves of the excess of our abundance of goods. When there are people that have absolutely nothing, now it's going to get quiet. I'm going to talk about your money and those clothes, some of those clothes you never wear anymore or some of that furniture in the basement when there's a mother that doesn't have any at all. Okay, I'm going to start stepping on some toes and mine too. Okay, compassion and action. Why should we store up things when there is a lack in the world? Amen. Amen. And I'm not talking about sell them either. I'm not talking about sell them either. I'm talking about give them. Give them. Give, and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give back to you and to your bosoms. Amen? Last week, there was a guy from Kenya that liked one of our things on Facebook. And I pulled up his page and started looking at, you know, uh, what he was all about. And there was all kinds of children, and his name's Kennedy. So if you watch this Kennedy later, God bless you, okay? There was uh, all kinds of children, you know, ministering to children and all that. So I sent him a message, and I said, how can I bless you? He didn't ask me. I asked him, how can I bless you? So uh, he said, it's very expensive. We, the, food, the children need food. But it's very expensive for you to ship food here. If you'd be willing to make a donation, then it would go towards them. Immediately, we, you know how we are. We're skeptics now. All of us are skeptics. And we rob a lot of people of their blessings because we're so skeptical. That's what the Spirit of God is for. Lord, should I do this? Is this good ground? Is this good ground to sow into? So I did it. Sowed the $50. Let me tell you what this man did. This man got the $50 out, was so thankful. It cost $300, he said, to feed the children for a month there, partially. Was so thankful. He said said it would cost $300 to do it, but listen, brother, you send whatever you can. Anything you send will be appreciated, okay? Send him $50. This man, okay, for the skeptics in the room, let me tell you what he did. This man took pictures of the food that he bought with the money. This man took pictures of the food being transported on the back of a motorcycle to the camp. This man took pictures of the children eating the food from the money that I sent him. Okay? Days later, I get a call to work a, to, to, to work a job okay, at a place I was already going to be teaching and speaking at, okay, since I wear two hats of pastor and police officer, the pastor was already going to be there for free, okay? But they said, hey, since you're an officer, we've been blessed to pay a few officers now for the position. Would you be like, like to be one of those paid officers? I said, whoa, yes, of, of course, yes. Amen? Of course I do. All right? So listen, listen. When you, and it was, it was a lot more than what I sold, I'll tell you that, a lot more. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosoms. But it takes your compassion first. If you are compassionate towards those that the Lord loves, he will always bless you. Always. He's a good, good father. The reason some of us are not blessed is because we're stingy. Period. We've allowed fear. We've allowed, okay, we were burnt once, so we said, I'm never being burnt again. Look at that. All the devil had to do to cut off our blessings was allow us to get burnt one time, 
And we said, I'm never giving anybody else more money. That's it. That's all the devil has to do is send one bad guy, one person to abuse your, your generosity to cut you off from the rest of your blessings. We need to examine ourselves and say, Lord, don't make me that way. Every time I hear of a need, don't let me start with skepticism. Let me start with discernment. Discernment and skepticism are two different things, okay? Discernment is this. I'm not looking for a way to say no. Ooh, praise God. <laughs> I'm not looking for a way to say no. I'm looking for a way to say yes. That's what discernment is. I would like to sow into you, but let me check with the Father to see if this is good ground. Discernment is not, mm -mm, you got to show me something. Show me, I need some receipts. I need some pictures. But I did not do that. So maybe, maybe why Brother Kennedy was so willing to send pictures is because he knows that there's some people out there that are wolves in sheep's clothing. Let me tell you something about the children that Brother Kennedy helps. It's a small school there, him and his wife and just a few volunteers. And these are orphans in Kenya whose mother or father or both have died from HIV. And many of the children have HIV. There is a great need in this world, not just in Kenya, but in East Lima, West Lima, South Lima, North Lima. There is a need. And the reason God has blessed us is not so that we can have 12 suits, but maybe we can help four people that don't have suits. Not so that we can have three sets of living room furniture, but maybe we can help two people that have no living room furniture. Not so that we can have five cars, but maybe that we can help three people that have no cars. The blessings was, was never meant to be stored up for us. God blesses us so that we might show compassion. Show compassion. The word of God says, freely you have been given. Freely you have received, so freely give. Freely you have received. I haven't withheld my blessings from you, so why are you going to withhold your blessings from the rest of the world? We know in Matthew, at the end of, of, of we know in, in, in John, or, or, or wherever it is, Lord, I'm just, I'm done with this. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit move. Okay? We understand that at the end, when God is separating the sheep and the goats, and, and, and he said, thank you for feeding me. And they're like, what? Thank you for giving me something to drink. Jesus, what are you talking about? When, when did I ever see you and feed you? When did I ever see you and give you water? When did I ever see you and give you clothing? And he's going to point to this, his sheep, his precious sheep, and say, when you did it for any of these, you did it for me. What a return on our investment. Let's stop being so skeptical. Yes, there's people, that, there's people out there that hold signs that say, I'm hungry, that have more money than you. But not all of them. Not all of them. Say this with me. Not, Not all, all of them. Okay. That's where we pray and say, God, is this, is this really a need here? And so what if you lose a dollar? Are we really that cheap? So what if you roll down your window and lose a dollar? Okay? We don't have to fast and pray about a dollar. Okay? Let us be moved with compassion because what you do for the poor, what you do for the needy, okay, it's like doing it for Jesus. There will be a third offering plate here this morning for Brother Kennedy. A third offering plate this morning for Brother Kennedy. And listen, don't give to get. Don't give to get. I can't promise you that you'll be blessed like I did when I sold into him because I sold for the right reason. If you're sowing to be blessed, don't sow. Do we understand that? You sow because you love. You sow because you're moved with compassion. And that's when God has a return on your investment because he's moved with compassion by your compassion. Don't sow because of greed. 
Well, I need a blessing. Well, let me sow. No, you don't sow for your blessing. Jehovah Jireh is your blessing. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. We sow because we have food in our cupboard already and we can lose a few dollars or so to make sure these children eat. It was such a blessing. This man sent pictures of the children eating. So wonderful. It, it is good ground regardless. You, well, say this with me. I, I am already blessed. blessed. You're already blessed. You're already blessed. So, so we don't give. We don't sow. We don't sow so that we can be more blessed. We sow because we are blessed. Do you understand that? Let's get that principle. Let's get that. Let's erase some of that false doctrine out there about, you know, so to get money, so to get more money. No, no. We sow because we are blessed. We give offering because God has already blessed us. Amen. And God continues to give seed to the sower. Amen. And seed is not always money. Where is sister? Back here on the back row. Raise your hand. The beautiful orange flower. You, yeah, yeah, you. God bless you. She came out on yesterday. Okay, how you feel today? You feel good? Got some energy? Got some strength? Okay. She came out on yesterday, and there was a busload of teenagers out there, and some more of you came. God bless you for those that came. And she said, Pastor, I'm here to walk too. Okay? So she planted her seed of time. She planted her seed of energy. She planted her seed of strength. And did you dress yourself this morning? You did? Did anybody have to help you into the building? Do you feel pretty good? <laughs> All right. Do you see? He gives seed to the sower. She sowed energy. She sowed time. She sowed compassion. And she's able to, stand, she's able to sit there and say, I didn't lose a thing. When you give to God, you never lose a thing. Let's stand to our feet. Love is a what kind of word? God is what? Action, folks. Action. Buy somebody else's meal sometime. If you know it's a single mother, Buy her some diapers sometime. Let's just stop praying for people and start blessing some people. Amen? Jesus didn't say, remember when you prayed that that thirsty man could have water? It was like you were praying for me. He didn't say, remember when you prayed for that hungry person to have food? It was like you were praying for me. That's not what he said at all. He said, remember when you gave that thirsty person water? It was like you were giving it to me. Do you remember when you fed that hungry person? It was like you were feeding me. We've got to stop looking at the faces of the people in need and look at Jesus. And we've got to be willing to say, Lord, even if this isn't good ground, I'm doing it for you. Even if this person isn't hungry, I'm doing it for you. That will transform our lives. It will transform our giving and it will transform our blessings. Because God wants us to be obedient to him. And he wants us to have compassion, which is love in action. Father, I've given them the word that you have given me to give. I want to be the first partaker, God. I want to be able to do exactly what I'm asking them to do, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want my love to be not just in word only, but in deed. So, God, I'm asking that you would help me overcome selfishness. Let's pray this together. Lord, Lord help, me help me overcome selfishness. Help me deny myself of the blessings you've given me. It's not, it's not all, all for, me, for me, but for others. Help my love become action. Help my love become compassion. Use my hands and my feet 
my resources, my strength, my health, my energy, my increase to bless others. And help me understand, when I bless others, it's like blessing you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise this morning.